Hello, this is Christian. This is a video three of the Laravel project. And this video, we we'll to look at just of the, some of the key components of a Laravel project. So it's important to understand where things are, how you know all these components are connected together in a Laravel application so you can you know uh, navigate around very easily. Right, so uh, first of all, I wanna go back and make sure that my application is running. If it's not, uh, make sure you do that first. So we'll go back to my Hello Laravel project. Uh, PHP artisan and then serve. Okay. And it should be running. So I can close this for now and go to my terminal, my browser, and refresh. It should be running for 8,000. Okay. So here again, this is the index page. Okay. Uh, if I go and type in here slash, that's the root directory. If I type in index.php, you can see it's the same thing. All right. So where is this file exist? That's one of the questions you should ask yourself, right? How does it know uh, to load this file? So let's take a look at what it looks like behind the scene. So back here, you can see again in the Laravel application, you have about you know 11 folders here. The way things work is that when you launch the browser, you go to that URL, that port number 8000, it's going to look inside the public folder here, right? So this is public facing, uh, um, which is just a root directory of your public server, like you launch on a, site on a, on a server. I mean, yeah, right, to, to public facing or client facing, the rest are in the uh, back end. So um, most of your time you will spend using not in the public, but in the, in the back end. So, anyway, the public facing here, you can see there's a file called index.php. And I mentioned earlier that if you want to add you know, images or any media content to your web page on the front end, you need to put inside a public directory here. So the CSS, which we created earlier, um, and any images and, and whatnot, all right? So that is what its index PHP is. And just to make sure it does work, what if I go and rename it? If I rename it to, I don't know, index two, right? So index two now has been changed. Now I go back to the browser and refresh the page. Well, guess what happens? It fails, right? And what if I go back and just go to the root directory? Same thing, it fails. It says, cannot find this file here, doesn't exist, or because of this. And here is some clue, right? This directory, this is my project here. If you go to the vendor, Laravel, Frameworks, SRC, Illuminate, Foundation Resources, server.php, that is where you will find that information, okay? So let's see if you go there and uh, see what happens. So back here, and the vendor, under the, um, I think Laravel, um, framework, SRC, Illuminate, it's already in there. So all these are under the Illuminate folder. Under the foundation, which is the foundation of the framework, uh, going to the resources, and there is the server.php. And this is where the file lives. So as you can see, it requires this file called index.php. And that is that file we just mentioned earlier up here. That is this file, let me open this. This is in the public folder called index here. So since I changed index two, if I change this to index two in here, normally you don't do this unless you really want to. So um, just be cautious. If I change the index two, that it matches my file, which I call it here. If I go back to the browser and refresh the um, refresh the server, and there it is, right? So now it's index two as opposed to index. If I type in index, it's not going to find it. As you can see, so 404. But if I call it index two, then that is the file. Okay, so if you want to call it index two, some people call it index and call it default, some home, whatever. It's up, uh, up to you. But again, I would not mess with this. I just tell you where things are, okay? <clears throat> so this is what it uses to um, bootstrap the application to that front end. So usually you don't go in here and change things, okay? So let's go back and rename it back to index two. I mean, just index, okay? So it goes in here, loads the auto load here for some uh, the vendor files. And then it bootstraps the application and then you know, it sends the request to this third front end and then it terminates this process, right? So that is important. Now in here, I have a CSS folder 
um, I created earlier. I also imported some CSS in here already. I'm going to use that for the next video. We're going to add some uh, HTML. So make sure you put that there. I will also share this with, with this with you if you, if you need it. Um, and again, this is the front end. How do I know that? Well, you can test it. Go in here and create a file called um, about that HTML. Very simple. And do the Emmet here. Create a really simple application here, which is called. Let me make it make it big. About. All right. So here we go. Save this file. Go back to the browser, and type in here about that HTML. And boom, there it is, right? So this is the front end, and uh, the other is the back end. So you can see why that Laravel is a full-fledged, uh, full-stack framework, right? You can build all your front end here, and at the same time, do all your back end here, the same directory here, same, same project, really. So really useful, really powerful for doing this stuff, which is also a really um, good, I guess, source for partnership with a view where you can add your view um, code or it doesn't be view, it could be Angular, it doesn't matter, right? React, it doesn't matter. On the front end, interact with the back end. Okay, so very, very powerful. Uh, I'll leave this here for now. I wanna show something really quick. Okay, so that's the front end. Uh, so the back end are, let me close this. Most of the times you will spend uh, your time inside the route folder. It's called the web.php. That's where you create all your routes. We saw this earlier. Now in the previous version, I think it's called web. I mean, routes.php maybe, but it doesn't matter. You can change it if you want to. Laravel is made to be flexible. That means if you don't like the way it's structured, you can actually change it if you know how to do that, right? So where is this file being called from? How do we know where this one is? If you go to the app folder up here, under the HTTP protocol, um, no, not, not under here. Uh, yeah, under HTTP protocol because you're using everything in HTTP. And no, not here. I'm just something something different later. And the providers, I'm sorry, the providers here, there is a route service provider that PHP. Inside here, you will see that there are two groups of routes, or we call this part of the middleware, right? There is one called the API and one is for the web. We'll talk about this later about this prefix, things like that, and, and so forth. But look at the web here. This is where the file is, route slash web.php. This file is this file right here, okay? How do we know that? Again, how do you know it's working? You can change it for either here or here. So if I go to the web down here and change it to say, I don't know, WebX, right? Change that, go to your site and refresh. This is okay because in the front end, the back end, you see that it's not gonna work. So there's an error saying, hey, I can't find this web, that PHP, where to go, right? Okay, so then that is where it's hooked that, with that one. So if you don't like to be called, you know, web, you can call it routes. Uh, if you um, from other application, they usually call it routes because it's more common to be that way. I'm not sure why they change it to web. I think I like your routes better. <laughs> so if you like your routes, change that here and also change that to routes. So go here and again, routes.php matches the routes here and the name could be just called web, doesn't matter. Okay, now if we go back to the browser and refresh the page and everything just come right back because this index is no longer called index two, it's just called index. So boom, there it is. Okay, so we got that, right? Um, taken care of. So I'm gonna go back and just revert it back to uh, just the web. Okay, not to confuse you uh, too much. Okay, so that's what it, it's being uh, created and called from. All right, so again, your routes will be in here. You don't have to create all your routes here as, as you build your applications go really, really huge. And you can have a lot of APIs in here. So when that happens, you need to break them out into separate files and import them back and, and export, you know, all those stuff. Maybe that's the future, okay. So that's that. Now, the other one is, uh, I mentioned earlier, is the HTTP. And inside here, you have one protocol controllers. This is where we, you know, manage and create our own controllers. So you have like a controller for a home controller, user controller, you have product controller, admin controller, whatever. What is a controller? Well, it's really, it contains some mainly functions 
that you know process some logic for your application. So instead of doing everything you know in the web API here, you can manage that by moving all different um, features, if you will, to a different controller instead of you know filling this up with all the get, put, post, and on the same page here. So we'll do that later. Uh, we'll put a class in here. We create your own controller, not inside this file, but you have your own separate file. We call it, you know, home.php or something like that. We'll do that later, okay? So the controller will be inside this controller folder. Again, you don't have to put it here. You can put it somewhere else if you want to. But again, why do you want to break that if it's already been built for you, okay? So just keep it as is, <laughs> all right? Um, so that's the controller. Uh, we're not going to do any of the middleware as far as I am um, concerned. Maybe not yet anyway. And then... The, and the models folder, okay, this is where your models live. So again, the model, the uh, view, we looked at already, view and controller. So the models, uh, by default, you have one file called user.php. And this is a file, it's just so common that uh, Laravel creates for you. And you can use this to create a database of users so that you can authenticate them to log onto your site. So you can hide, you know, content, right? Based on a user login stuff. So this is a, a, a sample one here. Later on, when we work with databases, you can come here and create your own database uh, code here. So in this, this approach is usually referred to as the code approach uh, or code first approach, as opposed to the data first approach when you create um, this type of framework. Um, it's also very common in other languages as well. Um, other frameworks like uh, .NET, for example, you have the entity framework in .NET where you can create your databases using just code, right? And if you create your code, a class, you can name all your fields because again, a class is mapped directly to a table, right? So the data fields are actually the fields inside a class as well. And so when you create your class of uh, tables of data in here, you can then run the migration process to generate your database for you automatically without having you to do anything in the uh, database system, okay? And this is the way to go if you are working on a team where uh, you have multiple developers and they want to share the same database on their end. So otherwise you have to go and do manually create your database, you know, look at the code and okay, I need this many hundred fields. That's a lot of work. So using this code first approach, it's, it's just very fast to do that for you. I can quickly generate a database within seconds, right? So that is a pretty poor way to go. And we'll be using this as well for this model. Again, we'll talk about models. It usually it refers to database or data, data systems, right? But it doesn't have to be. It just be any data, right? Data source. It could be a string file, it could be JSON text uh, file. It could be just a variable you store inside the data and, and pass it around, right? That's, that's what the data is. Okay, so um, we'll be creating some data in here as well. The, um, let's see, I think that's pretty much it I wanna talk about. And then finally, before I end this video is inside the views. Okay, so notice here in the resources folder, you have a CSS and there's a JS folder. Okay, we're not gonna use this in here. If you want to access CSS and add it to your site, make sure again, you put inside the public directory here. Okay, so in here, most of the time, you'll be spending inside the views folder here, and you'll be creating a lot of views. We call these templates. Okay, so here is the welcome blade file. This is a full-fledged HTML file, um, or PHP file, but has a lot of HTML code. Um, blade syntax, we looked at this already, and as you can see, uh, uh, CSS fonts can be linked here. I put, I, I kind of, you know, um, collapse this, you can see more. And then down here, we have the body of your HTML page, um, some, you know, syntax here again, blade syntax. Um, there is also a conflict, especially if you are integrating both blade syntax and backend, I mean, front end syntax, like for example, um, some other uh, front end also use the add symbol. If that's the case that you want to put, you have to figure this out. And there's a way to do that. I'm, again, I'm going a little bit my, myself here, but, um, I just want to show you that one, okay? So this is the welcome page. Uh, that's what you saw in the browser. And uh, all your syntax, all your blades files should be inside this views folder, okay? Again, does it have to be views? No, you can change it. It, it just, again, it's in the views folder. What if I uh, 
So, so how do you know where things is? One way to do that is again, like I showed you earlier, you renamed it to something else. And then, you know, look at the error message. It will tell you, hey, it doesn't find, it doesn't know what it is. Okay. Um, and so that's that's how you figure things out. But again, so this is basically how, you know, uh, Laravel works. Okay, it loads the index page. Every time you load the page, it goes to the public facing, load the index page and go from there. Okay, if you don't have this file, if you change it, it's gonna crash your site um, because this is the, the main site that loads up, that, that is um, hooked up to Laravel, okay. Um, and then again, some routes, we'll create routes later and and think that's it yeah so i hope this one kind of gives you an idea of where things are how they're connected in laravel and the next video we're going to look at the view and create some view templates